Hey everybody, this is Killing the Cabal. I am back with another video. Um, today I am going to be talking about someone named Daphne Guinness. So this is Daphne Guinness and um, I actually came across Daphne Guinness as I was doing research on Ray Chandler. So there is a connection between Daphne Guinness and Ray Chandler that I'm going to be getting into. And um, I really would stick around uh, for the whole video because there are a lot of pictures I'm going to be showing you guys and information as I go through that is very, very, very interesting. Um, and you guys know, if you've watched any of my other YouTube uh, shows um, they, or episodes, I only research what I'm interested in as far as the occult, um, Q drops, and also symbolism. And you know, nobody else was doing things like this um, as far as researching the occult Q drops. And so uh, I decided to, you know, take a look at some, you know, images as far as, you know, uh, pictures of celebrities and politicians and elites and kind of see what I could uh, get out of um, taking a look at their jewelry and their home decor and um, just basically images that I've uh, come across online. Um, and the way that I research is typically Google, but I also use DuckDuckGo because that doesn't seem to censor as much. Although, um, just in the last couple of days, uh, I have noticed that Google has kind of let up a bit and I am able to find a little bit more now, which is awesome. So before I get started, please uh, hit the subscribe button. If you like the content, please like, and also please share with friends and family um, or people that you, that you know on social media um, just to get this information out there. Everything that I do is absolutely free. I don't profit off of this in any way, shape, or form. I don't even get um, any money from YouTube. I'm not monetized at all. So um, this is just out of, uh, you know, me being, uh, you know, passionate about um, this kind of research and it's to me this is um, this is fun and it's interesting and I enjoy presenting the information talking about it and also explaining to people that have never um, dealt with this kind of information before so um, Daphne Guinness is a socialite she's also a fashion designer and I came across Daphne Guinness as when I was researching Ray Chandler now, Ray Chandler, if you don't know who that is, I'm not going to go into an explanation of who that is. Ray or Rachel Chandler can be found on many different YouTube channels, also online. She is mentioned in the Q drops. She is um, connected to Jeffrey Epstein and many, many other um, elites in the entertainment industry, um, as well as the art scene. So you can check that out, find out a little bit more about her. I wanted to find out if Ray Chandler was at all associated with a Marina Abramovich. And what I found was Ray Chandler is a photographer, which a lot of people already know, but she was photographing a party that Marina Abramovich was at and Daphne Guinness was at as well. So when I saw, first saw Daphne Guinness, <clears throat> I mean, as you're looking at her right here, um, you're going to notice that she has a very distinct style. She leans more towards um, kind of like a gothic look. And so she was very striking, very interesting. And her last name, Guinness, immediately popped out. She is the brother of Thomas Guinness, who is Ray Chandler's husband. Rachel Chandler and Thomas Guinness both do, you know, different, have careers in fashion and music and things like that. They both kind of do those, those type of things. Um, it's also interesting, and I'll note this, um, the Hiltons, Baron and his wife, Tessa Hilton, are both into the same thing. They, they all DJ, they all have music careers, they all get into fashion. They're all running in the same circles, okay? Another thing that's interesting is that Ray Chandler and Paris Hilton um, have been photographed together many times. So back to Daphne Guinness. Um, I immediately wanted to research Daphne knowing that she was Thomas's sister and knowing that she has um, 
close ties with many, uh, you know, elites in these, these different circles. Now, something that I want to note about Daphne is that, you know, she is a, like I said, she's a fashion designer. She's um, also a musician. Um, something I want to mention about these families is that each family, whether it's the Guinness family, uh, which is the, you know, the beer, they're the Guinness family is, is the Guinness brand. Um, whether it's the Guinness family or it's the Hilton family or whatever family it is, each family is working to climb the ladder, okay? They want to achieve a higher social and economic status, but they also are trying to gain a better foothold in the cabal. Now, when you're thinking about your own family or those in your circle of influence, everyone has people from different backgrounds in their family, different careers and things like that. I have, you know, teachers and, and you know, all kinds of different people in my family, right? Um, scientists and things like that. But none of us talk about what we're going to do before we do it, right? No one, we don't have meetings where we're like, hey, you know, what kind of career do you think you could get into to advance the family? Now, I think the opposite goes for these elite families. I think that they all play a part and they're all trying to help each other get further ahead and gain a better foothold in the cabal. When Q says that they, may, they don't marry for love, what that means is that they are trying to um, build stronger relationships with other elite cabal families so that they can kind of go with, you know, kind of, um, um, you know, work with them to, uh, to climb, like I said, climb up that ladder. So Daphne Guinness is no exception to that role. She has many connections because of where she is. Now, if you look at her family, you're going to see business people and you're going to see artists and you're going to see um, politicians, I'm sure. And, and um, you know, her one sister had a company where she created children's toys. And uh, so, you know, everybody ha has a role to play in these families. And her role is very much like Paris Hilton's role. And... Um, also Gloria Vanderbilt, if you think about Gloria Vanderbilt. Now, I'm going to zoom in here for a second on her rings. And if you notice here, she has the Iron Cross on her rings. The Iron Cross, look it up. I'm not going to go into an explanation of that. But the Iron Cross, I'm going to back out for a second here, was also often used in Gloria Vanderbilt's fashion as well. Gloria Vanderbilt was an artist. She was also um, a socialite. And so it, I find it very interesting that both of these women like um, that particular design in their jewelry. It's not something that most people would, would end up getting. Okay, so um, let's back out for a second. I want to show you guys something. She actually is a musician, like I mentioned, and this is her new and latest album. It's called Hallucinations. This is her album cover. Immediately what pops out is the all-seeing eye. As I go through this video, you're going to notice that she incorporates many different um, symbols and images into her uh, persona that are typical of the people in the cabal. All right, right here, you have the all seeing eye inside of a pyramid. And this is one of her rings that she likes to wear. It's actually one of her favorite rings. I don't know if that ring is the same as this ring. I don't think it is. Um, it could be, but this one actually looks a bit different to me. Um, the eye seems to be protruding, whereas the eye on the other ring seemed flush. And so this actually has much more detail 
in my opinion, than the other. So I think they're two separate rings. But I wanted to point that out. Um, interesting uh, choice in uh, jewelry there. So let's go ahead and move to another picture here. All right. Um, another thing that she's that Daphne Guinness is really into it seems that she's really into Asian culture um, so the the dress that she's wearing the headdress she's wearing is um, is very much influenced by Asian culture right behind her you can see the um, the statues in the background which are Egyptian so I thought that was a bit strange that she would have um, you know, this, this picture that was taken of her uh, with musicians in the background, you have stars all around, and then in the background is a golden statue of Anubis, which is um, really common when, you know, when you see things like, you know, Katy Perry's music videos, Madonna, her, you know, performances and things like that. So they like to incorporate Egyptian culture um, and imagery into their their stuff. Um, let's take a look at her um, interest in butterflies. Okay, so once again, this is Daphne Guinness right here. Um, if you if you look up her home, you're gonna see. And please excuse the nudity, but that's what these folks are into. So. Um, if you take a look at pictures of her home online, you're going to see a theme of butterflies. Um, so we have some right here. I'm going to actually zoom back out and then show you guys this right here. We're going to zoom in. All right. We're going to move up. Some more butterflies here. And let's take a look at... Actually, let's go back because that's not, here we go. And then this is her, the last room with all the butterflies in it. Um, butterflies uh, can symbolize Project Monarch. Project Monarch was um, used as a mind control operation. And I would just do a Google search of that if you want to know more about that. Um, so I think that could be a reason why she likes butterflies. Um, something that I want to mention about Daphne Guinness is that she was married to a gentleman named Spiros. Um, I always have a really hard time saying his last name. Um, it's, uh, let's see here, Spiros Nirkos. I think that's how you say it. Um, Daphne has three children with Spiros. Her children are Nicholas, Inez, and Lex. And um, in one interview that she did, she was asked about her marriage to Spiros. Now, she was married at 19 years old. She actually wanted to go to school, and for some reason, um, she did not do that, and she ended up marrying Spiros instead. I don't know if that was a decision that she wanted to make or was forced to make or was asked to make, but that's what she did. And in this interview, when asked about her marriage to Spiros, she said she did not recall it. She did not remember it. Now, I don't know if that means that she had a very hard marriage to this man and it was just really difficult. So she didn't want to remember those times or, you know, maybe maybe it could mean that she really just did not remember it. OK, um, that segues into this woman right here. Her name is Isabella Blow. I was trying to do a Google search of um, Daphne with antlers. I wanted to see if there was any connection with her and antlers or horns. Antlers and horns, of course, that's going to be representing uh, the Baphomet. And there are other deities that that um, coincides with. But um, I came up with Isabella Blow. Isabella Blow had a connection to Alexander McQueen. Alexander McQueen created different uh, fashion pieces, and one of those uh, he in one of those he used antlers. 
Another person that wanted to popularize antlers in fashion was Mary-Kate Olsen. Mary-Kate Olsen has been pictured several times with Ray Chandler. Um, she also has connections with the death of Heath Ledger. And those connections you can find through different YouTube videos. But um, So the antlers uh, that are shown here on Isabella Blow, I think these are the ones that are made by Alexander McQueen. But I thought that it was very interesting. And I did a little bit of research on on. Izzy or Isabella Blow. She, um, she was uh, friends with Alexander McQueen. She was also um, diagnosed with bipolar disorder and ended up committing suicide in uh, 2007 at 48 years old. Now she was um, a fashion designer and she also, um, when diagnosed with bipolar disorder, she underwent shock treatment. So I wanted to bring that up because shock treatment is not a, um, is not a therapy that you typically hear most people go through when they're diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, and I thought that was very disturbing and strange. And it all, almost makes me wonder, you know, with, with shock therapy, you're going to go through, you know, memory loss and, um, you know, missing time and things like that. And I almost wonder, you know, did Daphne ever at any point go through something like that since she also, you know, mentioned that she didn't recall her marriage um, to Spiros. I, I don't know if that's something that she went through, but um, she is connected to Isabella Blow. So I wanted to kind of make that connection there. Um, I'm going to show you guys another picture with Daphne Guinness. Uh, this is Daphne doing a photo shoot with a gentleman um, that does a lot of photo shoots with Daphne. Um, his name is David LaChapelle. David LaChapelle is a very popular photographer and director. He directs videos like music videos and also um, I think he got into movies recently but a very very popular photographer with the stars including Madonna um, her contacts that she has in she has in one brown one bright blue okay so I don't know if that's representing duality but the owl most certainly would represent Moloch which is a deity that a lot of these cabal members worship all right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the people she's connected with. Here we see her picture with Marina Abramovic. They look pretty friendly. We're going to go ahead and go up to her with Daphne uh, with Naomi Campbell. Here they are again. Very interesting. They look um, pretty friendly, like they know each other very well. Um, let's go to this picture right here. Who does that look like to you? It kind of looks like Naomi Campbell to me. Now this portrait is in Daphne's living room. This is the main portrait in her living room. And the portrait, you're going to see a rooster right there on the right, excuse me, on the left. And, um, please excuse the nudity once again. That's what these people are into. So um, the rooster ha represents a lot of different things. Um, and so I'm wondering if that symbolism is being incorporated for a reason. Um, you can see that there are, <laughs> there are children, there, there are babies um, with missiles and, you know, guns and things like that, which is just so strange. There's some treasure there with a skull um, half-naked man, and of course this half-naked woman that looks exactly like Naomi Campbell. Not sure if that's who it's supposed to represent, but that's who it looks like to me. Um, something I noticed in her bedroom that I thought was a bit strange. Uh, now I know she's into Asian culture, which is great. Um, you know, Asian culture is beautiful. Their art is beautiful. Um, their history is beautiful, but you know, whether, um, 
whether or not this has anything to do with it, I don't know. But, um, you know, she has a picture on her bedside table. I don't know if it's because she just admires Asian culture. So she has a picture of a young Asian girl, but um, I know she has three children. I don't know why their pictures aren't posted here or, you know, not posted, but, um, you know, uh, around her bedroom. But um, that little girl is definitely not her child. Um, and it and it actually looks like an artist's rendering. It's not an actual photo. So I'm not sure why that's there, but I thought that was interesting. Wanted to point that out. Um, okay, we're going to take a look at some art now. Art, you know, not really art, but it's, it's their art. Okay, so this is going to be a bit disturbing. All right. Um, right there on the car is Daphne Guinness. Okay, there's a lot going on in this scene. You have women passed out naked. You have men... Um, laying all over them. Right here, there's an older man with a naked woman laying in his lap. There's naked women dancing in the background. You also see um, a young girl sitting there next to everybody. Um, and then a man with holding a snake with these shoes that are um, the shoes of Hermes, okay? So they're incorporating Hermes once again into their, their uh, you know, that symbolism into their supposed art. Um, there are different ways that they did this. Um, this is probably one of the most disturbing here. Here you see the little girl sitting on this older man's lap while you have all of this going on around them. Look down below at her feet. Okay. And then we're going to zoom out and go to this picture right here. There's the sofa. There are people with masks on. People are passed out. Daphne's still in the car. And, um, yeah, just beyond disturbing and disgusting to me. That is a real little girl, okay? These people are sick, as Q says. Um, this is an art. They can disguise it however they want, but it's disgusting to me and uh, disturbing. Um, okay, so I knew I, f I know that I flew through those pictures pretty quickly, but um, I just wanted to, one last thing, wanted to show you guys. Let's just take a look at um, some pictures of Daphne Guinness, okay? These are just some of the outfits that she likes to wear. And um, keep in mind that you guys can do any of this research at any time yourselves, um, looking up information. Now here's a Daphne picture with little Kim. There's that ring. And that ring does look different than the, uh, the one that I showed you guys with the bulging eye. Um, Daphne Guinness also has a Twitter feed and she's on TikTok. If anybody wants to take a look at some of the stuff that she's posted um, just to research it on your own. She definitely has an obsession with fashion. She's also done several photo shoots with Lady Gaga. They're pals, I guess. It's a very strange outfit. Um, here you're going to see, right here is uh, once again that Egyptian culture that they love to, um, you know, recycle so often and her face is wrapped up kind of like a mummy. She's even standing like that. 
like a like a mummy. Um, Daphne definitely has ties to the royal family and to many, many different um, celebrities and elites all over the globe, actually. But this is a really good place to start with, um, with the information I'm showing you here. And one of the points that I wanted to just reiterate is you know, when you look at when you look at an image like this where you have a lot of things going on at once, it never made sense to me um, that they try to incorporate and throw in as much of their symbolism as they possibly can in one frame or in one shot. If you look at Nicki Minaj's um, uh, video music, you know, performance. There have been several performances where she's incorporating Egyptian culture and unicorns and, you know, pyramids and all of these things at once. Katy Perry is another great example. There's an image that I posted to Twitter where um, Katy Perry has, you know, antlers in the frame. There's two owls. There's the head of Medusa. It's all there at once. And when I look at a picture like that, she's standing in front of a fireplace, in front of a mantle, and there's all of those things in that one shot. It doesn't look cohesive. It's, there's no theme going on there. Um, it's just a mishmash of all of the symbolism that they could possibly cram into one shot. That should be a huge indication right there of it being a staged thing where it has a lot of meaning behind it as far as their... Um, their occult uh, worship goes. So when you see something like that, it's, it's not really art, okay? It's, it's, it's not. They can pretend like we just don't, you know, they can say that we just don't get it and, you know, but that's not art. It's, um, it's uh, you know, it's their way of sneaking in as much symbolism as they possibly can. For their, uh, you know, worshiping, the worshiping of their deities that they worship. Okay, so this is a good place to end the video. I am going to be doing a periscope, a live periscope tonight, probably around 8 p.m., 8.30 Eastern uh, Standard Time. And I am on Twitter and Instagram at Killing the Cabal. When you go to my Twitter feed, it's going to be at TruthTeller1313. And the whole 1313 is just, that whole thing is, it's just my birthday, nothing behind that. I always like to mention that. Um, but if you find me on Twitter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post um, my periscopes. And I, unfortunately, I cannot do a live stream on YouTube because I don't have enough followers yet, which is totally fine. Um, but I have to be at a thousand followers in order to do a live stream. So eventually, you know, I'll get there and then I'll be able to do that. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, start doing live streams on uh, Periscope. And um, the purpose behind me doing the live streams is to answer questions and to give you guys resources and to kind of give you information about how I research things, where I go, um, and then what topics to kind of look at. Um, but, uh, hopefully I see you guys on Periscope tonight. I'm going to start doing that more often. So if you want to be a part of those live chats in Periscope, find me on Twitter and just kind of follow along. And as I decide to do those and they'll pop up on my Twitter feed and, um, you definitely want to click, um, the notification, uh, bell and, um, you guys have a great night and stay safe.